Good morning again, everybody. <laughs> As I mentioned, my name is Father Larry McCullough, and I'm a Mary Knoll missionary. Has anybody ever heard of Mary Knoll? Nobody. Oh, oh, all the old people. Yeah, okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, as you might know, Mary Knoll was founded by the U.S. Catholic bishops to represent the U.S. Catholic Church, namely yourselves, in mission overseas. When I, we're all Americans. When they see us, they see you, <laughs> the people over there. <laughs> and part of our job is to come home and let you know how things are going. Now, I've been overseas almost my entire priesthood. I celebrated 51 years last year. And you know, I, that's very moving. When I've been visiting many churches, and every time I mention that, people applaud. They never applauded when I say I'd been ordained 20 years, but 51, I guess. Uh, but, so I appreciate that. Um, of course, there are problems, so I've been in a lot of places, and there are problems everywhere. We're not in heaven yet. But the good news is, tremendous things are happening. It really is an exciting time for world mission, how the church around the world. I'll try to keep it short and get right to the point. In 1985, I went to China. I went to Sichuan province. Sichuan is a province in the center of China. And I started teaching at the Sichuan Technical Institute. After two years, the rector of the university, a Dr. Li, <clears throat> who at the time I didn't know very well, since then we've become good friends, he invited me to his office. Now, I didn't know what he wanted, and I was somewhat apprehensive, but of course I went. <clears throat> and when I got there, my name in Chinese is Ma, Ma, which means horse. They call me Father Horse. Uh, the name for priest in Chinese is Shen Fu. Shen meaning spirit or spiritual, and Fu meaning father. So Shen Fu, spiritual father. It's a very beautiful title, huh? So I invited him in, and he shut the door, and he almost whispered. you got to remember, things were just beginning to change. And he said, Ma Shen Fu, could you do me a favor? And I said, of course, Dr. Lee, what is it? He said, as you know, our government is communist, but nobody believes in that anymore. We used to have courses in Marxism, and we've dropped them. The problem is, we don't know what to believe, especially our young people. So I give you permission, because obviously without his permission, <clears throat> I couldn't do anything, to go around and visit as many classrooms as you can, and just share you know, with our students what motivates you, like to get up in the morning but especially to have come all this way. Of course, here I am thinking like a missionary. So I started visiting classroom after classroom. Now, as you might have heard, and it's true, the students in the Orient are wonderful, very respectful, very attentive. But when I showed up, they actually got kind of excited. They had never seen a foreigner before, literally. I was one of the first foreigners on campus. Oh, ma shen fu, ma shen fu, waning, waning, lai. Woman, you ting me the dowly. Father Larry, come on in. We're anxious to hear what you have to say. So I said, <laughs> I'm a Catholic priest. You know, blank stares. Never heard of one, never met one before. I said, I'm a Christian. Now they have some vague idea what that means. They know that Christianity is one of the great world religions. I said, we believe, huh? we believe that there's a God. You see, they don't. It's not that they don't believe, no one's ever told them. And we believe that this God has created this magnificent universe that surrounds us. And he's created you, he's created me, <laughs> because he loves us. And to be happy, to be really happy in this life, the most important thing is to care about one another. That's all I said. Now you hear that every Sunday, right? That's the gospel. I, they had never heard that, and I was not ready for the reaction. Very emotional. After every presentation, kids would come, come to me and say, Father, I want to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you. I need to talk. 
And, I, and so I find some quiet spot, and frequently they line up, you know, just come in one after another and unburden themselves. And they'd say pretty much the same thing. They'd say, Father, that was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. You know, our faith is beautiful. Look at this church, huh? But then I teach tears coming down their cheeks. They're wound up so tight. And they say, Father, no one has ever told me that they loved me. All we ever hear is work, 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 get ahead, get ahead, get ahead, you know? And then, uh, again, I wasn't ready for this. Many would say, Father, what can I do to learn more about this Jesus person you're talking about? So that's how it all started. Now, in China today, well, we're already in 2021, seems impossible, <clears throat> because I'm a foreigner, right? I'm a foreigner, obviously. I cannot say mass in public. If I tried to baptize anybody, I'd be on the next plane out. The police are everywhere. <clears throat> um, now, Chinese priests, sisters, lay people are working 24-7. Uh, but I can't, I can't do that. But explain this to me. They let us have Bible study. They say, well, the Bible's one of the great books of the world, so if the kids want to know something about it, that's okay. <laughs> so what the kids do, they go to the local Catholic churches, which are opening, it's just tremendous, opening throughout China. I could talk forever, just opening throughout China. And now I know you have here at uh, St. John the Evangelist the RCIA program. In fact, there's a notice in the bulletin about the RCIA. It's one of the great programs in the church today. We have the RCIA throughout China. In fact, it was brought to China by who else? Marian Albreeze, Father John Hines, back in the late 80s. Every year at the Easter Vigil, uh, <clears throat> and this has been happening for the last 20, 25 years, ever since this first crack in the wall for religious freedom, and I ever said just a crack. Freedom of any kind, as we know it, does not exist in China. The government controls everything. But there's enough space, huh? Keep your head down. There's enough space to do a lot of good work. Every year at the Easter Vigil, more than 100,000 adults and young people, a lot of young people, are received into the church. This is what I call, and many other people call, uh, an explosion of faith, a hunger for the Word of God. And it's officially, it's right in the Constitution, officially atheistic country. What really excites me is that when these kids come back to the university, <laughs> you know, they've been Christians for a whole week. <laughs> you can still see the holy water on their forehead. But like young people generally, they're filled with the Spirit, huh? And they say, Father, what are we going to do to help people? Huh? They know to follow Jesus of Nazareth is to help those less fortunate. Now I noticed in Chengdu, Chengdu is the capital of Sichuan province, back in the late 80s, there wasn't one little school or center for seriously handicapped children. And the reason for that is cultural. In China, as unfortunately in many other parts of the world, when a child is born with serious birth defects, now thank God, thank God most parents, as you know, love their kids no matter what, thank God. But in China, they feel embarrassed. They feel humiliated. The famous phrase, to lose face, huh, in front of your neighbor. So what do they do? They hide their children. They don't want anybody to see them. They don't let them go outside. So we had to start off by knocking on doors. One of the very first families we visited family Chen. We knocked on the door. The lady of the house came and said, yes, how can I help you? And I said, we hear, we're from the university, and we hear that maybe you have a child who's sick. And she said, well, yes, my oldest son, Whaley, is sick. I said, could we just come in for a few moments and say hi? Because she was kind of surprised, but she said, sure, let us in. Little bitty house. In the back, she had like a laundry room. She was actually doing her laundry when we showed up. But laying on the cement floor, on a white sheet, was her oldest son, Chen Weili. At that time, he was 14 years old. Very, I guess, very handsome. I can still see his face. Very handsome young man. Quite tall, very thin, but his whole body like shook, like this, like trembled. Now, I'm not a doctor, but like he was spastic, you know. He couldn't control his muscles. So obviously he couldn't stand up. 
But you know, we take things for granted. If you can't control your muscles, you can't talk. Our tongue is a muscle. <laughs> so you couldn't speak either. But if you've ever been around handicapped children, uh, you really, when, he, when he realized that, that we had come just to see him, he started giggling, getting all excited. So I knelt down beside him, and I put my hand underneath his head just to lift it up a little bit, you know, so he could see us better. And I almost dropped his head. He was missing half of his head. From the top of the forehead to the back of the neck was completely flat. I've never touched anything quite like it. So very gently, I put his head back down. And when I did that, I realized the reason this young man was like that was that basically, since he had been born, he had spent his entire life, at least during the day, laying on that cement floor. And you know a baby, when they're born, the cranium is very soft. His skull had taken the shape of the floor. That's all it was. Afterwards, I noticed in a lot of our kids who are crippled, spend a lot of time on the floor, the same kind of indentation, but his was severe. So he told his mom, we're opening a little center at the local Catholic church, and every day some parishioners would come and take Wei Li in the afternoon and bring him back. Because she's very happy about that, something for her child. And that's how it all started. Now, <clears throat> when I left China, I've been back in good old US of A for four years now, we had 21 centers. Every Catholic church in Chengdu and the surrounding area had a little center. We never say to these beautiful people, we're not going to help you unless you become a Catholic, unless you become a Christian. Never. As you know, God's love is for everybody. But they, like I say initially, they're very shy. It takes them maybe six months, maybe a year. But sooner or later, they all pop the question. In Chinese, it's Wei Shema. Why? Why are you people doing this for us? And that's when we say, because we believe in a God of love. Woman Shin, Yi Wei Ai Woman de Tian Zhu, we believe in a God of love. And they all say, Father, that's what I need. That's what I want in our family. And that's why if you go to China today, and it's very easy, of course with the COVID, for a couple of years you couldn't go, but now it's opening up again. And you go to a Catholic church on Sunday morning, you probably will be standing up. The places are absolutely packed. It's just tremendous. Now I'm here today, obviously, to invite all of you to join with us in mission. You know, Mary Nollers go overseas for life. <laughs> Not for a week, a month, a year, which is great. Overseas for a year is wonderful. We go for life. We, we learn the language. We study the, the culture. We fall in love with the people, and we proclaim the gospel. But we cannot spend our entire life overseas without the love, the support, and the prayers of the U.S. Catholic Church. So do you guys like the missions or not? Are you, <laughs> you better not say no. <laughs> Look at it. So, if you, want to, if you want to help Mary, now it's very simple. Um, you'll notice we got envelopes. Father Dan printed up an envelope from the parish. It actually says Mary, now I've never seen that on a parish envelope before, so I'm very grateful to Father uh, Dan for doing that. So this is a parish envelope. It's at the edge, end of the pews. And I got another one, a little bit bigger. <laughs> Same kind of envelope, white envelope. Also at some of the pews. And at all the exits when you leave church. So if, oh, if you make out a check, we love checks, make it out to the parish, make it out to St. John the Baptist uh, Church, but on the bottom, put like for the missions or for Marino, and that will get eventually uh, to us, okay? So, and after Mass, now I, I noticed you have these collection boxes, they're beautiful, I think it's really good. Uh, you can put them in the collection basket, or if you didn't bring your checkbook, <laughs> take them home. And bring them back next week, huh? And, uh, uh, and then put them in the collection box. And again, I, uh, on behalf of more than a thousand, now we've got a thousand married old men and women. We have priests, brothers, sisters, and lay missionaries working in 27 different countries in the world. I just want to say thanks huh, for your love and support. Finally, can I give you my blessing? Uh, the name's McCulloch. Can I give you an Irish blessing? 
Okay. <laughs> Can I give you my Irish blessing in Chinese? <laughs> Only at St. John's you're going to get a blessing in Chinese today. Why do I do that? Just to emphasize the fact that every language, every culture is beautiful, especially when it's used to praise God and help other people, huh? <clears throat> so this is how we give a blessing in Chinese. We say Yuan Tian Zhou. Now the name for God in Chinese is Tian Zhou. Tian means heaven. Tian. Have you ever heard of Tiananmen Square in Beijing? Tian meaning heaven, An meaning peace, Men meaning gate. Tiananmen, the gate of heavenly peace. Now, so Tian means heaven. <laughs> Zhou means Lord, Master, Owner. So the Chinese call God Tian Zhou, the Lord of Heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Yuan Tian Zhou, Zhang Fu Niman, Bao Hu Niman, Su Ge Niman, Ping An, that's an An again, peace, Ping An, In Fu, Ji Zhe, Ji Sang Shen Zhermeng. Amen. Of course, that simply means, may the Lord bless you and protect you, fill your hearts with his love and peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.